Oh my god, what are Rick and Ryan up to now? It's time for the Slightly Warped Podcast. It's the Slightly Warped Podcast, and today we got a treat. Not only am I here, not only is Big Show here, we are joined by Greg Brown, owner of Shogun Martial Arts Center in Merriam, Kansas. Greg, what's good? Everything is good. Life is our perspective as far as what, what my realm has. There's always good in everything. So what's good is exactly what what you see i mean life is good there's still good people out there friendship is good i'm glad to be here today with yourself and uh sensei pulley long lasting friend and martial artist and student of shogun so yeah things are absolutely fantastic and popping off well here on our shogun island so how did you get into uh, martial arts? How did you get your start? It's funny you ask that. I actually started, this is a funny story. I actually started out of fear, F-E-A-R. I started because I was afraid. Now listen, I went to a school, uh, it was called Francis Willard, right? In inner city. Mm-hmm. In kindergarten, I was asked, someone wanted to fight me uh after school this is kindergarten now you know in kindergarten back in those days this was in 1969 uh no 68 i was five years old so i'm like okay what do you want to fight about and of course back, back in those days all you did was fight right so anyway i'm like okay what's this about come to find out there was a girl there that liked me and he liked her so he wanted to fight me because she passed a note to me Mm. And we didn't end up fighting, but it was just the thought of it. I've always liked martial arts. And uh, I had an opportunity in a, uh, actually, it was in uh, Juniper Gardens, right? And you have Gateway. This was over on First and Quindaro. My cousin, Steve Brown, uh, lived over there. And there was a guy that just got back from the war. And he was doing horse dance and some punches in the front yard. Uh, of the projects over there we call it the jets and all of a sudden we were passing by and he says hey you two come over here i want to show you something and next thing you know we started he was teaching gojuru he was uh over in uh okinawa Mm. so that's how that was my introduction to my first class in martial arts and that's why i started taking on martial arts other than the passion and purpose but because i feared for my life when i was five (laughs) Now, which martial art do you specialize in and what do you teach? Now, that's that's a, a biased, unbiased question for me because I love all arts. But I specialize, quote, in a in a uh in a realm of self-defense. Now, which is Okinawan Kempo, which Okinawa is the birthplace of karate, not martial arts. So it's the birthplace of karate, which is actually uh, the warring, protecting side of farmers, just average people who learn how to defend themselves and their property with a purpose through the passion of the art. The second would be a taikaru aki jiu-jitsu art, which is a grappling, striking art. And all these arts are warring. They're just not practical arts for tournaments. Uh, Also, kubido, which is uh, Okinawan weapons, and those are farming tools that are turned into warring tools of protection of villages uh, that they used every day. So they were very astute in it because not only did they protect with it, but they also used it to uh, for agriculture and use it to feed their families and eat. Hmm. So they turn all those into warring, which is a daily process for them. So those are my those are my my particularly arts that I love. Jiu-Jitsu I love, uh, feeding crane kung fu I love, chi na, chi sao, the list goes on and on, sticky hands, hung gar, uh, Chinese boxing. I mean, I pretty much have done it all. I love them all, but 
this much more I love the other. Okay. So speaking of uh, learning the martial arts, what was your biggest obstacle in learning and, and, and growing in, in the craft? I think that I think that my biggest struggle for me, and, and keep in mind I'm not the normal. I can speak for martial artists who are like that. Just take that leap and go. I never got burned out. I've always done it. The obstacle for me was I just wanted to do it all the time. I mean, I I live it. I breathe it. I love the passion. I love the art. I love the people. I think the biggest obstacle outside of that is the challenge to truly understand what the art really is. And you hear about all oh, martial arts discipline. Oh, that's fine. But martial arts lives in your heart. I mean, you don't necessarily, quote, have to come to a dojo and train under the instructor all the time, in my opinion, to understand the art. You don't have to draw a picture all the time to understand how to produce a picture or express yourself on a particular subject or object that you see. You don't have to be a photographer to take every picture that you see. That picture in your mind is always there in your heart and you address it the best you can with it. Awesome. So it's just, it's, it's, it's lovely. The obstacle in my opinion is understanding that you don't choose the art. The art chooses you. Now, conversely, what would you say has been your proudest moment coming up? Oh, wow. That's. I mean, you can say being on the Slightly Warped podcast, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> uh, everybody won't believe that. <laughs> okay, you have to. Okay. You finally made it. As you got to ask me that question again another way. You got it in you, because I got goose. I have goosebumps right now. So, okay. So, so ask me one more time. Let, let me, let me, let me, let me generalize it because I don't want you to have to just hold off to one thing. So we can say, <laughs> what are the proudest moments thus far? Oh man, the you know. For me, the proudest moment is when you see your students grow. When you when you see someone who is struggling, you know, someone that has challenges, and someone that doesn't get it. When someone has to defend themselves, when it when you see it intertwine in a in a in a man or a woman's family as a parent as a child. Uh, as a youth, when you see a juvenile who's struggling with emotion and you see that, you see the art itself and understanding the discipline and self-control behind it, being able to relate that to them and have them show you that moment when they don't even understand that they're showing you that moment. Nice. That, that to me, those are my proudest moments. Uh, did I fight? Yes. Um, have I taught Navy? Yes. Have I, I've done a lot of things, but that's me. This is how I see it. And I use this in a, in a good way. A lot of people have done a lot of things to accomplish within their own realm. And when you do that, let's say you have someone that has seven rings and MVP. But do they have seven rings as a head coach? That's the difference, you know. It's easy to switch lanes when you're in your car by yourself and you're not worried about anybody else in the car. But if grandma's sleeping and she just took her medication and you know if you turn that corner too quick, she's going to pop you with her pocketbook, you know, you got to find a way to go keep her keep her sleeping, dodge the, dodge the car, and just keep on stroking. And when she just, okay goes back to sleep, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, the proudest moment is when you see someone else understand the art and you, and you use the art 
It's not a me thing. It's a art thing. And you see them grow and continue to grow with the rest of their life. That is what I consider my, my most proud moment in people that are here. I mean, even uh, when it comes to Sensei Pulley, that, that man is completely dangerous. And people have I, I no believe idea. it. <laughs> if people, I'm just saying this, and I know he probably didn't want me to say anything, but, you know, it, all, he, all he has to do is touch you. That's it. I want to be like y'all when you know, I grow that, up. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of him, too. So just, I'm, I'm a little partial, but just to let you know. many different paths through the wall of mystery to the glow but there's only one dragon so so man wake up so so wake up you doing it again man man i keep having these weird dreams let's get the day started peace is our shelter beauty and perfection is our art Peace is our shelter. Beauty and perfection is our art. Mumbo jumbo like that. That gives Kung Fu a bad name. Nigga, please. Never told, never switched, Dior never cover. Niggas sad, niggas told, niggas dug it rough. Go outside, never it up. I ain't never bluffing. I sip and met the scene where y'all had rubber tussing. Never told, never switched, Dior never cover. Who are you supposed to be? Who am I? I sip and met the scene when y'all had rubber tussles. Why didn't you take that scholarship and leave this place? You should have been at the dojo, well! I can't leave you around here, Mom. Not with him. I am the baddest mofo low down around. It should have been you out there. Until you clean off the table? What is wrong with you, boy? I try to give you a job for the summer, and this is how you repay me? You ought to be paying me for working here. All the money you costing me. Them boys just walked in here, and you still wiping the table. Why is you wiping the table? It's been 10 minutes, you wiping the same spot. Go to another table. So I understand now that you've dipped your toe into the acting waters. Is, is that uh, correct? I'm not trying to do all that. Uh, I was I was asked to uh, to participate in an icon of a movie uh, called The Last Dragon, and I remember going down to uh, to the theater and 
watching the movie, doing the Briarwood Six back in the day. And man, you, know, you going I'm back? Gonna, I'm gonna give my age away on this, but you know, when that movie came out, I saw it probably no kidding nine times when it first came out, and actually that kind of called me Bruce Leroy in a way back in the day, because even though you got the, the light skin, the Barge brothers, and you, you know, you got, <laughs> you got the dark fellas, you know, I was kind of Coco Brown, you know, but because of my art and because of how I moved and the passion behind it, they used to say, uh, my nickname, even today on some of these uh, people that I know, they still call me Bruce. But, uh, you know, I was offered to be the, uh, it's a prequel of the movie Last Dragon. And I'm I'm playing Shonuff's father, which is actually showing how Shonuff ended up being the way he is. And he's the Shogun of Harlem, right? So if you're not familiar with the movie, uh, that's the prequel of the movie. Actually, it's pretty exciting. They filmed it here at Shogun Martial Arts in a shiny mission kansas it was a weekend of, of filming and we were downtown and i gotta take my my hat off to khalid and Corey. these guys are great they're great movie film producers uh uh santiago vasquez is in it he's another just phenomenal wow martial artist. oh yeah he's in what's it he too. playing it he actually uh plays my rival but, you know, we don't end up fighting or anything in it, but he man. plays a rival, a school owner from another school. That is a bad man right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Santiago's a bad man. Yeah, so it's a prequel of The Last Dragon yeah. movie that came out with, it was a Barry uh, Gordy uh, movie, and uh, Ty Mack was the actual uh, main character in the movie. Does uh, it have hey, a release real quick, date yet? Not, uh, I actually talked to Corey today. What he's going to do is release the second trailer. He's going to re release the first trailer. And then uh, he just completed a second trailer on it. So he's going to release the second trailer as well. I'm thinking maybe end of this month, maybe mid-June-ish, uh, it'll be released. But it's, and when the, when the big day, day happens, uh, we'll have a big uh, gathering and I'll invite people to come and We'll make it a big deal. So you, you guys are welcome and have an open invitation when that day comes. Appreciate that. Real quick, uh, for those five people that are watching that haven't seen The Last Dragon, it is available uh, on streaming. I don't know which platform, but as soon as I find out, I will run it at the bottom of this screen. And uh, if you're one of the people lucky enough to uh, have it on DVD, uh, back in the day, I had it on VHS. Kids VHS was that thing that we uh, <laughs> used to use. Uh, oh, yeah. We stuck the tape in. Uh, I know a lot of y'all scratching y'all's heads out there. It was a thing. It was real. Yeah. Is that an eight track you're talking? <laughs> kind of like, kind of like an eight track for movies. Yeah, I have. Uh, actually, to be honest with you, I have two v, uh, VHSs. And I have three DVDs of that movie. My kids grew up on that movie, you know. So, uh, but yeah, I, it was a good opportunity. Uh, a lot. Of, I thank you for people for believing in me, my friends, students, and so forth, and people that I know. They they have more promise in me than I do. I'm not trying to go that direction, but for some reason, they have me like playing with. With uh, Michael J. Michael J. White in a movie together. I mean, you know. I'm telling you, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. <laughs> it's gonna happen. What, I would what was love that? To have... What was that one bone? What was that? What was that movie he was in? Ah, uh, where he put he broke the dude's shoulder at the very end. He started off uh, in prison. Oh, you're talking about? Um, it's on tip of my tongue. I can't think of it right now. And, anyway, part two, uh, you're in it. Uh, 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 never back down. Are you talking about? Um, man, I can't. I can't think of it right now because I know about look every it up while movie we're talking. out there. I know, right? I'm gonna look it up. Yep. 
So since we're talking Hollywood and we're talking uh, martial arts icons, who are some of the icons that you like to watch on the silver screen? Oh, man. You know, everybody back in the day was um, a Bruce Lee fan, right? Of course, you know, Bruce topped the list. Uh, but, you know, we can go all the way back to uh, Jim Kelly, you know. Mm, he, he was yeah. one of my uh, – Ron Van Cleef was one of my my top guys. Uh, there's another guy that – he's not a, a movie guy, but I talk to him often. Uh, uh, his name is uh, Sugar Ray Crossan. He actually – I bought one of his VHSs, and I believe it was either Panther Productions – it was another one out there too. I can't think of the name of it, but I bought his VHS off the back of a magazine, and he in late '80s, and that was quote my VHS introduction to uh, jujitsu. I, I talked to him off and on. Amazing martial artist and just a good guy. Uh, the list goes on and on and on and on. Uh, actually, on the boxing scene and the martial arts scene, but back in the day. I would have to say my my biggest my biggest icon for me had to be Jim Kelly. Had I to can be see that. Rest his soul. no joke. But I don't know Jim Kelly. He was a he was a football player. He's kind of like the the rocks martial artist because he played football, but he got into acting and he was cool. You know, he had the platforms and he had the the, the afro hair that was perfect. Oh man, Jim Jim was my guy. Hey, um, two things real quick for everybody else listening out there that are trying to figure it out. We are not talking about Jim Kelly, the former quarterback of the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> we no. are talking the other are Jim Kelly. About, are we talking about I'm, the martial arts Jim Kelly? Yeah. Although they look really similar. <laughs> <laughs> In the right light when you're squinting. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But Blood no, and Bone. Talking. That's the name of that movie. Was that? Blood and Bone. Oh, Blood and Bone. Yeah. 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 That's my favorite one. Oh, yeah. That was. All right. So let's petition everybody. Let's get a petition together for a Blood and Bone Part 2. That way yes. we can put Michael J. White Absolutely. and Greg Brown yes. together. Yeah. I think yes. Michael J. White, I think he's all on that anyway. He would love to make a, a Part 2, you know. But I remember back when he was in um, Universal Soldier, you know. Yeah, uh, that's right. He was in there. All the way back with... Uh, you know, John Claude uh, back in the day. Chuck Norris, of course, was always, you know, my icon. Uh, Jet Li, you know, uh, Donnie Yen, right? And, you know, Scott Atkins wasn't as popular, but he's coming up the charts. I mean, the list goes on and on and on with, uh, and, and a lot of a lot of the stunt guys are the Ukes. Actually, the Uke is the guy you're actually doing the technique on. So you grab them and rip them and they're, ah, Flip it all over the place. The Ukes actually make these actors who they are because if they didn't show the emotion behind the technique, you know, and they're just, you know, you the theatrical, but it still looks professional. They make the guys, they and they're actually taking the shots. I mean, Steven Seagal, everybody knows. He's he's twisting you up, man. You got you have to have four or five guys on the back burner after you do a scene with him. Everybody knows that. But you know, even I, I still I, I can separate the personality of the person from the art. So even though maybe lifestyles and personalities don't jive with things I agree with and how they live, but mm -hmm. you cannot take away the moves. You can't do that. Uh, actually, a good friend of mine. I never met him, but we talk all the time. His name is Sifu Kenneth Edwards. Sifu Kenneth Edwards was the brother that fought Guru in Mortal, uh, Mortal Kombat. And he's the one that said, you can't fake those moves, you know. Hmm. So, and he was also in a couple movies before that. You know, we like each other's stuff on Facebook all the time. There's a lot of good people and a lot of people out there, even back in the day, that I admired because... He said that, but you can't fake his moves. If you look at how he's moving in Mortal Kombat, he is one of the best, cleanest practitioners of Kung Fu that I've ever seen. He's knowledgeable, 
clean, just completely professional. Another guy is Sifu Derek Whitlow. Uh, he's another good one. He comes from our James DeBro Fighting Tiger group. James DeBro is no joke. Uh, back when they were making Texas Ranger, they wanted him to work with Chuck Norris, and he's an actual Texas Ranger and uh, combative instructor for the martial arts in Texas right now and a contractor, right? He's He's retired. He's no joke, but he had to decline because he was doing some undercover work. Mm. So you have wow. all these people in our lives right now in terms of opportunities that I looked up to back in the day and even today. That's cool right there. And and, and you sure you don't want to just jump on into the uh, acting waters? <laughs> I, I'm not trying to do all that, man. We don't want to share him like that either. I mean, we'll rent him out every now and then, but we don't want him to be gone that long. I mean, if if the opportunity came, uh, I've had, I was asked to be in three other three other movies in the past, and I declined. Uh, that's it, it was it wasn't the time for me, and uh, even though I may come across as being oh he's arrogant, he thinks he's all that. And look how he walks, you know, you know he thinks he's unbeatable. No, I don't. No, I, I'm. I call myself I a self-defense specialist. <laughs> I call myself a self-defense specialist. That's it. So, I specialize in a field. So what separates you from other dojos? What separates Shogun Martial Arts from other dojos out there? I can I can say what separates us is our agenda, and of course, it's what I call a sticky note technique, right? And you that's when you see a technique, and it's like, oh, I know that. So everybody goes, sticky notes. There's only one person who actually invented sticky notes, right? There's only one secret sauce to KFC. It doesn't matter if people think they had the sauce afterwards. I call it a sticky note technique, which means when you see something and you go, oh, oh, yeah, I know that. But not do it first. Self-defense counterattacks are a part of martial arts. What we do is we, we have a particular agenda. And the mantra is to defend your life and the life of your loved one. There's two sides, in my opinion, in martial arts. You have passion and you have purpose. The passion is just wanting to do the move and see the move and enjoy the martial art. There's nothing wrong with that. You can passionately do yoga, you know? Nothing wrong with passion. What we teach is purpose first and defending your life through the moves by way of the passion behind it, which means martial means military or, or militant. Do is way. Art is a way up. Martial art is a militant expression or art of the particular situation that you have to use to defend yourself. Shogun martial arts is different in that way because we teach 12 different systems that all blend together on all the systems I know. And we use them to defend your life and the life of your loved one in case that situation has, has presented his, th itself in front of you in fear. And you have no choice but to defend it and use it. There is a model recon of a cross shoulder grab, same side shoulder grab, headlock. Step in hook punch, you know, low kick, rear forearm strangle, you know, uh, defense against a roundhouse or a high kick to the head. So all these techniques that we're doing are all defensive in a self-defense because in case that person fits that particular agenda with the knife coming into you, <laughs> then you will know how to move the technique and restrain them. 
that's where we're different. So anybody can say, yes, you know, we have self-defense too, but we live our self-defense and purpose through the passion of martial arts, the way it was intended to defend your village and your family. So anybody who's uh, interested in learning, how do they contact you? What's your contact information so they can get in touch with you? You can go to shogunmai.com. That's my website, shogun, S-H-O-G-U-N-M-A-I, as in martial arts international.com. And uh, you can contact me through the website or you can call uh, 913-638-3490 and uh, we can have a conversation. And this is my thing. You don't necessarily have to uh, sign up for the school if you have a particular situation that's going on. If you have something going on at school uh, with a kid being bullied, if you're being abused at your job, if you want to know a friend of mine and blah, 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 I will open my heart and give you the, the best advice and counsel that I can at that particular time. So you don't have to call me to sign up. You can also call if a situation uh, presents itself and you need some advice on it. We also have... Uh, law enforcement friends, uh, students here at the dojo. We have lawyers here. We have a a, a deep pocket of professional people, hospitalists, uh, doctors, lawyers. So if you're really in need of help, all you have to do is just give me a call. I help you out as much as I can. That's what we do. That's what uh, that's what hey, Jesus and senseis do. I might need your help because I'm being abused at my job. They're not paying me enough. <laughs> well, Seriously, they need to get though, more uh, money. Tell them, they, they do. They they really do. What what are the uh, youngest and the oldest students that you've had? Wow. Uh, okay. Not fair, but I'll answer this. Uh, my daughter uh, Chandra. I started training her when she was eleven months, almost going on a year, a year old. That theoretically is my youngest student. Uh, I have a picture of my son, Jace, in his uniform at, um, I think he was a year and a half. Wow. Yeah. And I've trained them. And, I mean, since they probably has known me for years and everything, I'm t I mean, it, it's true. And I was teaching them how to block. I was teaching their hands, you know, how to do mitt work. And I was teaching them how to, you know, cover out and, you know, and they but they never really did it on each other a whole lot. You know, I mean, uh, since a pulley has uh, his kids were were in martial arts. I don't ever remember since a uh, pulley saying that they're all of them are beating the mess out of each other. You know, there's a respect that comes with the art of the instructor. But uh, my youngest has to been that my outside of my family. I can say my youngest that I've trained here at Shogun Martial Arts. Uh, started at about two years old, two and a half. And my oldest student, uh, actually before Shogun Martial Arts, I trained at uh, AKKA Karate. I was the second uh, instructor there uh, and lead person. I trained a guy there who was 82. Hmm. He was 82 years old. He stayed so there. you can learn at any time then. You can start at any time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The oldest student I had here that black belt in two different systems was a student by the name of Joanne Hurd, Sensei Hurd. So she was 79, I believe. No, she was um, 72 when she got a black belt from me. My, old, no, my, you don't my oldest instructor is a Renshi Rod. He's 71 right now. He, this guy, he was like a miniature Hulk Hogan. I mean, he's ripped. And he's 71 yeah, he, years old. He's been with me uh, 14 years. Yeah, Sensei Rod's a bad man as well. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Natural born grappler. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So I would say one, two ish up to like 70, late 70s, early 80s. Oh, so I know now, you don't normally like to do this, but can you just shoot out your ranks and the systems that you have? Because just so people I, 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 I know I wouldn't wrong. normally ask you. I wouldn't normally ask you, but it's for the podcast. Yes. I know you don't like it, but I want you to give your credentials, your 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 ranks, because they're very extensive and very well deserved. So I want 
I want my listeners, our listeners out there to know who we're talking to. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll say some of the ranks first, and then I'll kind of go into, I'll go into the, uh, the difference on how martial arts feel, martial arts practitioners feel about having multiple ranks and multiple systems. So if you start from my lowest rank right now, uh, in October of um, 2023, I, I received my uh, third Hall of Fame uh, down at Umaha, Universal Hall of Fame of Martial Arts. And uh, I didn't know if they was going to do this through Supreme Grandmaster James DeBro, but they got me back in the room back there and uh, basically just drilled me. And I ended up getting a first degree black belt in Hapkido. Uh, I have a fourth degree uh, black belt in Taika Ru Aikido Jitsu under Doc Rodriguez. I have a six degree black belt in Okinawan uh, Jiu Jitsu. I have a um, eighth degree black belt in uh, Okinawan Kempo and weapons uh, Kubido. Uh, I have a seven degree black belt under the late great Hanshi Bryan out of Texas. And I got seventh Don on the United States Black Belt Association in um, ABBA in 2011. And I was just presented with um, my ninth degree red belt and um, Shinderu and also Kempo Karate, uh, Kempo KMPO Karate, uh, I believe it was December of 2023. And that gave me my Hanshi status uh, on that level. So I uh, received uh, my grappling black belt uh, as well. So I study all these systems. I also have a black belt in um, in uh, Swan Fall Kung Fu and it was a black sash uh, to a point. I also have a black belt in, uh, in Eagle Claw under a uh, Professor Ken Baker, and that was back in 2004, I believe. But all these, I still practice. I mean, I I don't get to that level and stop. I get it, don't forget it, keep it. So I still practice that up to this day. So I would say overall, that would be it. And you also have knowledge and and experience in Western boxing, correct? Yes. Yeah, Yeah, Western boxing. A box for two years. Uh, also, Chinese boxing, which is the Kung Fu uh, side of things, you know. Uh, AKKA, American Kipo Karate Academy. I mean, just I was in that system nine years. So Now, yeah, as a fellow martial artist, all of that makes me drool, you know, because <laughs> I know I know you personally. But just to throw it out there for people that don't understand, all of that is wrapped in that brain of his, and he pours it into all of his students and makes you that much better. So I just wanted to throw that out there, just let you know, you know. Out of all the systems, I I know there's systems that I've studied, they don't blend together. The mechanics of the body, they they don't jive, right? So, you know, when it... When it comes to swimming, you know, it's almost like taking somebody that doesn't know how to backstroke, but they're excellent at backstroking and relay racing. Most most of the time, you don't find two opposite people or opposite things that come together. But but if you find that person that finds the blend of the stroke together, you have a Jesse Owens. I mean, it's just when you get the art that complements each other because they don't complement each other, you have two opposites that attract, that are meant for each other. Fire is good. Water is good. Of course, you're not going to put them both together because you're not going to have anything. But if you know how to use them both together and the origination of the blend in culture was made for each other, then that's the secret to the sauce. So yes, you know, this, these systems that I teach, the 12 systems, they all blend, even sticks, ground grappling, Aikibu Jiu-Jitsu, all those systems blend. But you can do on your knee, you can do standing up. You can do standing up, you can do flat on your back. And people don't believe that because people want to believe what they want to believe in their in their arena. 
And most people don't search and do the work outside of that. So it's just, that's the, the difference. Some people are going to tell you, you can't have that many systems. I've studied two martial arts systems at the same time. I left, I left one dojo and went to another dojo. Most martial artists don't do that from two completely different instructors. It's funny that so, you mentioned that because uh, my next question would have been about the dedication. How much time would you say should be dedicated to learning the craft just for the layperson? For the layperson, I would say with, with a quality instructor and a good environment and good good technique of the school with a good agenda, you can dedicate an hour and a half, you know, two or three times a week. You know, it doesn't, you don't have to live in a dojo to benefit the from behind it. I mean, if you have quality instruction and you have a, a, a perfect, a good agenda and a good curriculum, and you care about the student for the long haul, not just to throw two kicks and get a patch and I want to have the best school in Kansas City and you're going to make me look good and blah, you know, no. You, you With quality instruction and good experience, what's the technique? Knowledge, ability, and experience. I'm not saying go out and have a fight, but a lot of these instructors that are teaching fighting have never been in a fight. I'm not saying have a fight, but experience. They don't have, they haven't experienced the adrenaline dump. A lot of people have not talked to a law enforcement officer using their martial art that they saw you use and couldn't get to you. And they saw you defending yourself. And when they got to you, you had to explain that experience calmly. You have to also talk to your students about the aftermath against a combative. A lot of people teach combatives. Combatives are against somebody combatant. Combatives aren't made to go around being combative towards people. That's not the martial way. You can Very nice. three hours, four hours a week is good enough. I have one last question for you. This is gonna put you on the spot, kind of sort of in a way. But now somebody told me once. Somebody told me once. I'm here all night. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who used to say that. If you had the attention of the entire world for five minutes, what would you say? Okay, for five minutes. First, I would start with. There's positive, right? There's positive out there. Okay. I have something called cognitive response. Cognitive response is in everything. It is cognitive. You, you, your cognitive response is thinking about what you're doing. Are you responding or are you actively doing positive things? We are surrounded by God's good green earth. We're surrounded by so much positivity. You cannot have the tainted milk. M milk is pure. You put one little piece, something that's not pure in it, it's going to show more because it's pure. We have to keep it pure. You have to keep it positive. It's, you know, be positive and surround yourself with good people. Listen to good music. Quit taking in the negativity. Don't let the internet raise you. We have grown folks that are letting the internet raise them. The internet is a good source. I'm glad it was invented, but like anything, as a human nature, we're invented. We were made by God. There's good and bad in us. Only good is through him. We have to see the positive in everybody. Once we understand that, we'll understand who we are, and we need to let Stop letting people indoctrinate our minds and understand it's okay to be you. It's okay to look into things. It's okay to, to understand that you don't understand. The other thing is trust. We need to learn how to filter trust. We need to learn how to 
not jump into a trustworthy situation with someone who we have we haven't known long enough. We need to learn how to trust. And when you find that person, you have to know trust is reciprocated. You have to give trust back in a positive way. People are going to let you down, but they don't mean to. Everybody is not out for you. It's not about you. Sometimes things just happen. And some people are too prideful to apologize. You have to go first. Ask questions nicely. Don't interrogate. Get down to the bottom of things, right? Stay positive. Don't always think every, everything's negative. And even though it may be at that particular time, how about changing it lemon to lemonade? How about making a positive influence on that person just by understanding that, yeah, I got it. We're good. Thank you. Doesn't have to be all hostile. Five minutes, that's all we need in every aspect of everything. You know, stay positive, make somebody smile. Everybody's going through it. But you don't have to go through it in your mind the way it is. You can go through it and focus on things that are positive along with it. It could always be worse. Mm, well said. Yeah. That, hey. Hey, right? I like him. Uh, we definitely got to keep him. <laughs> that's that's one of the yeah. best. That's one of the best answer closing answers of any interview that I've done. I appreciate that. Yeah. So, that ladies is, and gentlemen, I would say this Brown. about. I would say this about Sensei Greg. He is one of the most genuine friends a person could have. I know if I needed his help at two o'clock in the morning, he's just a phone call away. That's good people, then. That's good people. Yep, absolutely. Hey, Greg, we really appreciate you taking time to come on the show. And and and, and I do mean it. Uh, anytime you want to come back, the door is open. I mean, I, I would love to come back. I'd love to uh, uh, just ask me all the questions. I don't have all the answers to everything. I have a lot of experience and a lot of situations that, that have happened in my life to make, to make me who I am. I've been... I've experienced racism from my own people, from white, black, whatever. All people are good. You have to see the good in them. And I've had a lot of people opposite race, my and my people included, that have helped me be who I am. This is one of the most diverse dojos in the Midwest, 8,000 square feet and over 300 students. And All started, family. And just started. Uh, since they probably was one of my original students. You know, just... Like it goes on and on, and I, it's it's not a, a a facade. It's not a fake. It is. Walk through the door, feel the energy in this place, and you people will understand it. And it it, it doesn't have to stop here, at Shogun. It can be around the world and be contagious. So I Amen. I can come back at any time. Um, you know, I, I welcome to come back at any time. Welcome to open it up. How whatever you want me to do, I'll do whatever. If it helps spread positivity. Uh, amongst the listeners and around the world and whatever, it, hey, I'm all for it. It doesn't matter. Well, we appreciate that. We'll definitely make that happen. Yeah, I would like that myself. Once again, everybody, uh, Greg Brown, and he is the owner of Shogun Martial Arts Center in Miriam, Kansas. And if you guys do have any questions for Mr. Brown, uh, make sure that you email us at the Slightly Warped Podcast at yahoo.com because we will get Mr. Brown back on and we will uh, be at the ready with those questions. Oh, no problem. Thank you. Oh, so I appreciate it. Uh, sounds good to me. Whatever I can do to help, I will. All right. Appreciate Thank you, you, brother. Love you. All right. Love you too. In the appreciate mighty you, words, Ryan. Russell Simmons. Okay. God bless you and good night. And good night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, See ya. See ya. Very good, Ryan. You uh, your track record is getting even better uh with our guests here. I, I like that. You two well, for two. I knew, once, I knew once I got Sensei on, you know, he would he would steal the show. He's he's a phenomenal human being, and we haven't even scratched the surface. Right, of, now now I'm gonna have to up my game with my next guest. 
I seriously got to step my game up. All right. That's our show for today. You want to take us on out of here, Ryan? Hey, uh, we're just going to reiterate everything the sensei just said, you know, stay positive, stay blessed, love each other. Tomorrow is not promised. See y'all next week. Yeah.